serious stuff now. Um, and do you know how, how you can identify whether stuff is serious or not? Look at the presenters wearing a tie that make it a serious topic. Um, I will talk about uh, simplification today very much, and I'm actually considered in, in, in Central Eastern Europe as an ambassador for simplification. Um, but before I'm doing that, I would like to, to say thank you to my Bulgarian colleagues who made it happen to me, for me to talk here, uh, which is a particular pleasure because I have a personal connection to Bulgaria. I literally started my professional career here in the country. And I really do like Bulgaria for various reasons. From an SAP perspective, uh, as you heard already, we, we have made an, a significant investment here. We do have 600 IT developers working on our leading edge innovations. So we are in constant contact here. And that's possible only because there is a great cooperation with universities and there is a number of big talents in this country. And that's the reason why we made that investment. I will, we are continuing that. But another reason is, and, and that's actually pretty well represented in this room, and this is actually the fact that there are so many startups in Bulgaria. And somebody might ask, Reinhard, why do you believe startups are so important for SAP? And they are. So we do have a global program, actually, and a very close strategic cooperation with 2,100 startups already. And as an enterprise vendor, we do have quite obviously a strong interest in large corporates, because this is actually where we made historically most of the money we make. But quite recently, SAP was, was um, actually confronted with the fact that the maturity level of ERP solutions actually, more or less in all our markets, is coming to an end. So we cannot grow in that space anymore. And what we are looking for is actually innovation. And this innovation actually in our strategy has two elements. The first element is of course to innovate in our core space, in the ERP space. And we just recently introduced the fourth generation of our ERP software. But the second and probably more important arm of our strategy is let's say business innovations. And when we look at large corporates, they struggle in innovation because what they do primarily is they keep the lights on, right? If you're a large corporation, you're quite busy with your, with your operation, with, your, uh, with, with actually competition from outside, but they hardly innovate actually. But it's the nature of a startup to innovate, right? So there is a new business model that nobody was thinking about where typically no software or no IT support exists. And what we do is, together with startups, is actually we do co-innovate. We look at the business process, we are pro pro providing a platform which is called the Subhana platform, and together with startups we develop new things, new innovations. And SEB, we, we truly believe that this is the future, actually. So, going to my, to my second slide, and I hope I know how to operate this. Um, and it's a fun story, actually, because when I was showing that picture to my wife, I asked her, what do you see? And she said, well, I do see choice. I said, no, it's not choice, it's chaos, it's complexity. So for all of you who do see choice on that picture, please do me a favor, do see complexity. Because I like to use that picture as a metaphor for IT systems. And I really hope that there are not too many SAP officials in this room. We actually invented ERP a number of years ago. We kind of reinvented SAP with uh, release three, and we actually improved a lot how we do enterprise resource planning globally. But then, quite honestly, we fucked up. SAP actually was following the same trends like every other IT company, and what we did when we were introducing new things we added another layer to our IT infrastructure. What does it mean? Huge complexity. And at the end, you look at a system where there are probably, hopefully, two experts who know what they are doing, who know how the, the system is operating, and if one of the two is, is disappearing, you're in big trouble, if both are away, then you're in huge trouble. So, what, what we actually introduced recently is, um, Oops, sorry. Um, 
And this is actually the picture that I would like to talk about a little bit, is which areas of, of business did we touch and why do we believe that we are actually extremely well prepared for new innovations? Um, and why are we doing it simply? I mean, when you look at history, complexity most probably is the, is the worst killer on this planet. So the, typically the simple survives, this is true for the dinosauria, this is true for companies when you look at at, at recent business examples where large companies actually became too complex and simply disappeared from the marketplace. So simplification in our belief is everything. And one of the aspects of simplification, and this is actually something we are confronted with on a daily basis, particularly from the younger generation, which is represented in this room, is, dear SAP, your user interface sucks. And quite honestly, it does. When I look at the majority of our implementations, they are not fancy by all, they are typically not, not user-friendly, and the user interface is typically not smart. And the, the transformation that took place is actually that, that the user interface as such is not predefined. So when our engineers are, are developing a new uh, um, business use case, they do not know in advance with which user interface the, the, the whole solution will be consumed at the end. Or would you believe that somebody in, t in 10 years ago would, would have known that the smartphone or the iPad or any other device that recently was launched would exist actually, and the life cycle is, is long. So what we did, we entirely, entirely decoupled user interface development from our business use case or from our software development. And there is an own development center actually in charge of user experience and they do independent development of the latest art of technology, if you like. And, and this makes actually our software now consumable, consumable with whatever device is available today and might be available tomorrow. More interesting than this, uh, and I think you have heard a lot when talking to SAP, is this real-time thing. And I, I have more or less daily discussions with customers where our sales reps were going in saying, so, well, with this new technology, you can increase speed dramatically, and I don't know, your report is coming up five seconds faster than it was before. Honestly, nobody cares, or at least nobody would make a... A, a, an investment of any kind just to improve performance of a report. That's just not business reality. We totally fail on that. But the real thing about real time, the real thing about the advantage of that technology is actually that, that you are changing the, the way you make business potentially. And I give you an abs abstract example. Imagine you're running an operation in the United States. So your headquarter here in Sofia and your your subsidiary in, in the United States. And you work together with them. And from time to time, a physical meeting is necessary. You jump into the plane and it takes you, I don't know, eight hours flight. So that's, that's reality. A couple of years ago, when Concorde was flying over the um, Atlantic Ocean, it took you four hours or five hours maybe. Does this four or five hours make a difference? Does this justify a ticket price three times the regular one? No, it doesn't. And what happened? It disappeared. Concorde is not flying over the Atlantic Ocean anymore. Because that's not a business advantage that you're looking for. But just imagine for a second that somebody would be able to provide a transport from Sofia to the United States that takes you there in five minutes. That's the paradigm change. This is actually what's changing the world. And this is actually what's changing our customers' life. This is actually changing business. So if if, if performance improvement is actually changing so much, you have to rethink your business strategies. And I will give you an example afterwards, which is more practical than this one. Um, allow me to be five seconds a bit technical to to, for you to understand what really happens with, with our software, what, what we have done, what is actually this simplification all about. And I will try to make it as simple as possible. Um, let's look on the, on the left side of the, of the picture, which is actually representing the old world. This is the way we were doing uh, software in the past, R3 if you like. Typically you have an operational system, 
which is transaction-based, and your transaction system is actually posting posting data into an um, oper operational data store. From the operational data store, you take the data, you are creating aggregates, you're making calculations, you put it somewhere into a data warehouse, from the data warehouse into a data mart, and then you're trying to, to report on this, which is all fine. And this was ac ac actually necessary in order to get to any kind of performance with classical database. It has a big disadvantage. Let's talk about the disadvantages of that model. First of all, you are duplicating data like hell. If you look at, at, at classic ERP installations, each and every data is duplicated at least five times. And their installation, it goes up to 20. So you're duplicating data. It's not smart because that costs money, right? Secondly, you're aggregating based on assumptions, right? You have an org, st org structure which is defined today, and based on this org structure, you're making any kind of aggregation which are stored again, and then you have it, and then, of course, management decides to change something, and what you have to do is you have to totally rebuild your aggregates. Okay, but there was no other possibility because within, with a database-driven, with a classic database-driven uh, architecture, actually, there's no other way to do this going to the right side, which is actually the new world, which is actually HANA, if you like. Here, each and every transaction stays in the system as it is, and we are not building any kind of aggregation for the purpose of reports or for whatever reason. We just keep the original data in an in-memory database. And the moment you need to analyze the moment you need to read that data. Actually, you read it from your in-memory database, which is actually on the spot, real time, and you're building the ag aggregates on the fly. So, two big, big advantages. First advantage, is advantage, no duplication. Secondly, ultimate liberty when it comes to, to aggregations, because the only thing that triggers the aggregation is the formula. And the formula you can change on the spot, you can change your your org structures, whatever you do, because whatever you are reporting on is actually on the spot calculated. So that's the paradigm of, of, of HANA technology. And this is actually something that we take into consideration for all our software development when it comes to our, our software. But actually, that is something which is available for you as well, and which is heavily consumed by startups around the, uh, around the globe. They're using the same technology in order to, to build their use cases on a real-time real-time um, uh, platform, if you like. So let's, let's talk about the, 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 about a topic that I'm tired to talk about, to be very honest. It's big data. Big data is everything. Everybody is, is big data. In fact, it's so much mystified that I think nobody actually really understands what it is. Um, but I but I want to, to actually leave you with one information only. There is no business on this planet for which big data is not relevant. And what I mean by that is consumer behavior, social media, whatever source it is, structured, unstructured data. It's only when you are leaving, let's say, your own data world, your own data space, irrespective if the amount of data is really big, this is actually big data, and this becomes more and more relevant. This is actually digital transformation, if you like, and this is changing business so much. When you look at your own business today, look at the competitive environment, and let's talk in five years again, I tell you that the environment, your competitors will look totally different, totally different. Companies go into various different um, uh, markets, actually, they're, they're using their own install base, they're using their own customers for various topics, and they might become your competitor tomorrow already. And now the, the concrete example, and this is actually what I took from my home country. I'm, I'm Austrian, actually. And I was once um, approached by an Austrian company, and I didn't actually know the company. I just, the guy just told me I'm from Hagleitner. Does anybody know Hagleitner in this room? Okay, so then the, the story is less fun for you probably, but it was a lot of fun for me. So I met the CTO and said, so, hi, Reinhard, I, I was just listening to your keynote and I, I do understand that you're in this innovation business and I have an idea. I want to be highly innovative and it's 
It's actually about big data, it's about real time, and it's a huge challenge for us, and I think it could make us ultimately competitive. So, ah, you're the CTO of Hakleitner. I'm really sorry, but I don't know the company. What's the business that you're in? I said, we're in the toilet business. And okay, I was looking for the cam, so where, where's the hidden cam actually making jokes about myself? And I said, no, honestly, I'm, to be a bit more precise, I'm in the public toilet business. Okay, that makes it much better, of course. Um, he said, no, what's, what's your problem, seriously? I mean, I just didn't want to make jokes about a potential customer. And he said, honestly, we are operating um, public toilets, typically at, at uh, um, gas stations, at large event, sense, uh, event centers of, of multiple hundred thousands of people attending, so working globally. And we do have a huge problem, and it's a an hygiene problem. Again, it's getting even more funny. I said, what do you mean by that? I said, so imagine a case, you go to a toilet after a car ride, and it's already urgent because you couldn't find a gas station. You get to the toilet, you do your business, and then you're realizing there is no paper in the dispenser. So this is a very bad situation for the person as such but it could be a very bad situation for the, for the operator of the toilet as well because people getting creative and... Um, <laughs> let's not go too deep into that. So he said, what if the dispenser actually would realize, a sensor in the dispenser would realize that it's running out of, of paper and as soon as the last guest leaves the toilet, it's getting locked automatically and a, a, a signal goes to the supplier to refill actually the, the, the paper dispenser. And believe it or not, and I, I don't have the time unfortunately, but we were talking about 20 different real-time use cases with this customer. And then I realized this is a true business case. Actually, we, we sold HANA. It is a real-time uh, real um, supported actually um, business case for which and you, I'm sure you, you, you agree to that, there was no standard application actually on the market available. And it was just this company that was looking at the process a little bit differently and cost savings due to this project actually were so massive that return of investment was less than a year. So the, the reason why I was giving that example, first, I think it's funny. Second, it's an Austrian story. But thirdly, and that's the most important thing, I do believe it shows that that the possibilities, that the use cases, actually, that we are able to address are really more or less endless. The only thing is, actually, it's in our imagination, it's in our heads, actually, in brains, in our ideas, actually, what to do and how to actually become better than others and to innovate. And that actually brings me to the end of my presentation. I thank you very much and wish you a beautiful day. Thank you.